Hi, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography with another one of my How I Took This Photo tutorial videos. This is the series that's all about camera skills. I find there's more than enough content on YouTube about how to edit your images with Photoshop and Lightroom and programs like that, but not nearly enough about how to take a better photo in the first place. So that's where I come in. Today I'm going to be talking about this photo of a group of giraffes drinking at a waterhole at night and I can tell you there was nothing easy about this photo. But before we get started please click on the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can stay in touch with new videos as they're released. First up a bit of background. In May 2019 I hosted a photography tour in Africa and we spent two nights at Atosha National Park in Namibia where our accommodation overlooked this waterhole. It was a place where you could sit all day and watch all kinds of wildlife coming in for a drink. Best of all, they turn on the floodlights at night, so it's a rare chance to see the animals as they come out after dark as well. So here's the shot I'm going to be looking at for this video. As you can imagine, a lot of things had to go right for this shot to work. Let's get a few of the basics out of the way first. For those of you who want to know, I was using my 18 to 135mm zoom, and it was zoomed out to about 100mm. I might have needed a bigger lens if I was going to focus on just the one animal, but here I was going for the whole family, so 100mm was all I needed. Naturally I used my tripod, as you do for almost all night photography. I haven't even started talking camera settings yet, but you know from the start you're going to be working with a slow shutter speed, so a tripod's essential. I also used my remote release, so I didn't need to touch the camera for each shot, and I used my 2 second delay feature. You might be wondering why I would bother with the two second delay when I was already using my remote release. Well when you use that delay feature, the first thing that happens at the start of the two seconds is the mirror that shields the sensor pops up. So any vibration caused by the mirror is gone when the photo is taken two seconds later. So a tripod is good, a tripod and a remote release is better, and a tripod and remote combined with a two second delay makes your camera about as rock solid steady as it can be when the photo is taken. Of course the mirror and the two second delay thing doesn't really apply if you're using a mirrorless camera. It's also important to remember when using a tripod to turn off your image stabiliser. On some cameras it's called vibration reduction, either way turn it off when using a tripod. The image stabiliser is supposed to undo a certain amount of camera shake that can happen when you shoot handheld, but when the camera's on the tripod your image stabiliser is trying to undo something that isn't happening, and it can actually cause blurring rather than preventing it. Now on to focus. There was enough light to allow me to autofocus on the giraffes, but I was using a combination of autofocus and manual focus for this night shoot. By that I mean that I would autofocus on the animals once, and then switch to manual focus. Then as long as I don't touch the focus ring, the focus won't change. This allows me to make sure my focus is on the money using the autofocus, but then not have to refocus for each subsequent shot. Ok, so now I'm all set up to take my photo. From here on it's all about the camera settings. The waterhole is a good 50 metres away from those lights, so even though they are pretty bright, the illumination on the wildlife is still pretty dim. I needed to do what I could to get enough light for a decent exposure, and still hope for a fast enough shutter speed to make the shot work. I started by putting the ISO up to 3200. A higher ISO helps to boost the exposure in these low light situations. I opened the aperture to f5.6 which is as wide as that lens will go at 100mm. And that brought me to a shutter speed of... half a second. Now that's a ridiculously slow shutter speed for any kind of wildlife photography. We know the camera won't move, but I also have to rely on the subject keeping still as well, because any movement is going to cause blurring. Luckily giraffes are big animals that move relatively slowly, and because they were stopped at the waterhole, they weren't moving around a lot. But I still got quite a lot of shots like these, thanks to the fact that I'm shooting living, mobile subjects. That simply meant I had to be patient and shoot lots of pictures to get the few sharp ones that I could call keepers. One final point I want to make about those camera settings. If you know anything about ISO, you'll know that a photo taken at night at 3200 ISO is likely to be pretty noisy. And these photos were noisy. You might need to view this on a big screen to see what I'm talking about, but you can tell from this closer crop just how noisy these photos were. This is the same crop after I applied a bit of noise reduction in post-processing, but even so, it's still a pretty noisy image. 
Noise is always going to be a factor for high ISO shots like this. But I guess you just have to ask yourself, do you want a photograph that is noisy but reasonably sharp? Or do you want a photo that is noise free but totally blurry? Because if I'd taken this shot at 200 ISO, my shutter speed would be something like 8 seconds. So the choice is pretty clear. Put the ISO up, accept a bit of noise, and deal with it as best you can in post-processing. And there you have the story of how this photo was taken. I had to do everything right in terms of camera settings, but I also had to rely on the cooperation of the giraffes to make this photo possible. But it's amazing what you can do with a modern camera if you understand your basic theory and you're willing to make the effort. Finally, I'd like to say a heartfelt thank you to Bush Baby Safaris, the terrific tour operators who made this whole experience possible. I highly recommend them if you're thinking of visiting Africa any time in the future. And before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see the next videos as soon as they're uploaded. I'm Andrew Goodall of Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.